What's up, Tailgaters? My name is Tailgate Nate. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody watching out there. And I'm sorry that these videos were not up Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, I got sidetracked and Wi-Fi was being a little sketchy here at my place. Um, but we are back recording videos for you guys. Uh, so today you are going to get this video, my top 25, and my college football playoff and New Year's Six Bowl game predictions. And then tomorrow uh, you'll be getting my weekly uh, predictions a little earlier in the morning. I'm going to record that video tonight and schedule it so it is up in the morning. Now, I realize that the Egg Bowl is happening tonight, so I'm going to be printing out a preview for that video, or my apologies, a preview for that game on my community tab. So make sure you go check that out. But today, again, starting off, we are here releasing my top 25 and reacting to the playoff top 25. So, uh, hey, if you like college uh football content and usually I don't upload this video this late and for that I do apologize again but leave a like comment subscribe anything you can to help support the channel does mean a lot to me so let's go ahead and dive on in to this week's top 25 now for honorable mentions there are quite a few more than last week Iowa is a first addition to the list and another Big Ten team being Illinois back on that list Oklahoma State dropped out of my poll from last week they are on this list no other Big 12 team Appears on this list. Lots of teams from the ACC. You got Wake Forest. You got Duke. You got NC State. You got Syracuse. You got Louisville. Lots of ACC teams awaiting in the wings to get in. A couple teams from the SEC. You got South Carolina. Pulled off that big win against Tennessee last week. And then Mississippi State down there as well. Liberty still waiting to get in. Um, and then some teams out of the group of five. You got Boise State. You got South Alabama, who are new additions, and then UTSA and Troy just barely waiting behind. So who did end up making my top 25? Well, let's go ahead and find out right now. Starting off with 25 through 21, I'm going to run through this video a little bit faster than I normally would, just because it is Thanksgiving and all. Uh, I am recording this like super early in the morning so that it gets out for you guys. Texas is here at number 25. I think the best four loss team in the entire nation. I feel like the playoff committee would agree with me on that. I think most college football fans would agree with me on that. Texas got a big game coming up this week against Baylor. Uh, and yeah, they've struggled, especially when they haven't had Quinn Ewers at quarterback. But over these past couple of weeks here, Texas has looked pretty good. They just thrashed Kansas this past week. Kansas, I think, is still a pretty good team. And so Texas in here at number 25. Coastal Carolina had their game with Virginia canceled for, again, obvious reasons as we continue to mourn uh, the loss of those uh, three players. Good news, though, Mike Collins is healthy and released from the, the hospital. So that is fantastic news. Uh, so Coastal Carolina looking like it's only going to play 12 games this year. Uh, of course, that is including the Sun Belt Championship game, which I believe they are already in. So uh, they got one last game this week. We'll see what happens with Coastal Carolina, and I know that Grayson McCall is out, but even with him out, this team has still played really, really well. UCF dropped seven spots after their, frankly, surprising loss to Navy this past week. Really no reason why UCF should have lost that game, but they didn't play uh, up to the style that UCF has played like all year long. Sorry, I know, my hair is crazy. Um, why do you think I'm wearing the hat? Why do you think I'm wearing the hat? This morning, it's because my hair is just wild. So I'm wearing the hat to hopefully <laughs> make it a little bit better. Ah, whatever. It's fine, right? Yeah, okay. It's fine. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> We're just going to go with it. Uh, but UCF, shocking loss to Navy. Probably shouldn't have happened. And that's why UCF dropped seven spots. Definitely still in the running uh, to get into a New Year's Six Bowl game because Tulane and Cincinnati play this week, and as long as UCF can take care of business against South Florida, since the winner of Cincinnati and Tulane will be rematching against UCF, and UCF has already beaten both of those teams. So it'll be interesting to see what happens in the uh, American Conference, but right now UCF at number 23. Up three spots from last week, uh, I did have them at number 25. Is Oregon State, they're up here to number 22. Big game coming up for them this week. Ooh, they got to play the Oregon Ducks. That rivalry, right? The in-state rivalry. Corvallis is the host site for that game. Oregon State can bring a lot more mayhem to the Pac-12 if they're able to pull that one off. I know Oregon already has two losses and is out of the playoff. Um, but Oregon, if they win that game, well, on their way to a Pac-12 title game, 
Oregon State can cause chaos. Again, quarterback situation, get that figured out. But the rest of the Oregon State Beavers program this year has been tremendous and phenomenal. And then Cincinnati is up here to number 21. This is a phenomenal team. Uh, one of the best teams in the group of five. And you'll find out later today why I think that in my New Year's Six prediction video. Along with the playoff predictions, of course. Uh, but for the Cincinnati Bearcats, this is a team that, well, quite frankly, definitely still in the running for a group of five spot. <clears throat> my apologies again. Woke up not that long. I'm recording this pretty early in the morning for you guys. So sorry, sorry if my voice is a little quieter than usual. Cincinnati definitely still in the running for a group of five spot. They play host to Tulane this week. That's a huge game in the American Conference, and we'll see what that game unfolds like. So there's 25 through 21. Moving on now to 20 through 16. And this is where I got Tulane at number 20. So again, huge game in the American Athletic Conference. Tulane, after disappointing years, bounced back in a big way. Uh, Michael Pratt and company are playing really well. And they got to go up against Cincinnati, right? That's a Cincinnati team that's also been playing really good football this year. So we'll see uh, what Tulane and Cincinnati holds. That game actually takes place tomorrow. Um, kind of the reason I am putting out my uh, weekly prediction video tomorrow morning for you guys to watch before all the Black Friday games kick off. Uh, of course, I'll be previewing those first in the video, then we'll move on to Saturday games later. They got some big ones tomorrow, some big ones on Saturday there as well. Of course, the Egg Bowl tonight, that'll be previewed later. Speaking of Egg Bowl, you got the Ole Miss Rebels here at number 19 uh, after a quite frankly, blowout loss to Arkansas. Yeah, I know the score was 42-27, to 27, but, those, but those of you that watched that game, that was not a 42-27 to 27 game by any stretch of a mile. Any stretch. That was a bona fide blowout. It was, what, 42-6 to six at one point? I mean, good for the Hogs. They needed a win like that, but for the Ole Miss Rebels, that was not... That, that that very well, that that loss right there definitely took them out of contention to run for a spot in the New Year's Six Bowl game. So Ole Miss will not be going back to a New Year's Six Bowl game. But hey, this is a team that can still wrap up with a very good nine-win season here coming up in this game against Mississippi State tonight. I, I believe it's a 7 o'clock game on ESPN. So definitely will be a really interesting game to watch. We'll see if Ole Miss can close out the season strong. Speaking of closing out the season strong, I know, I just have really good segues today. North Carolina, yeah, the the, the, the slim chance that they were going to make the college football playoff is now gone, and I think really any hope that they might be able to pull off an upset against Clemson may very well be gone as well, because that is an unexcusable loss to Georgia Tech. They, you guys were up 17 points. It was 17 nothing. Everything was looking good, feeling good, and then just the worst collapse imaginable happened, and North Carolina could not survive the Yellow Jackets of all teams, and now North Carolina, uh, very well, probably going to end up losing badly to Clemson. Um, look, North Carolina, I thought, was going to be a sleeper team and that they were going to give Clemson some trouble and that that was going to be a fairly hard-fought game. And now after that performance against Georgia Tech, I am no longer as confident in them doing so. Um, look, North Carolina has some really good pieces, right? Uh, Drake May and his offensive weapons and wide receivers are really, really good. But that defense, man, just continues to disappoint week after week after week. So we'll see if North Carolina is able to turn that around. They got NC State this week. They're going to have to be on their toes that game's on Friday. And then you got Clemson in the ACC championship game, neither of which are going to be easy games. So let's see what the Tar Heels have in store for us. Uh, but right now, I did drop them five spots to number 18. Although UCLA did lose, I feel like I underrated this team last week. So I did bump them up one spot to 17. And again, that is virtue of some teams dropping below them. Hence the two teams that are below them, North Carolina and Ole Miss. So I got UCLA here at number 17. Um, look, this is the team that when they're on, they, they're playing really well, and they almost had it in that game against USC. They forced a USC punt, and again, that game kind of felt like, well, if you punt, you lose. So UCLA, everyone kind of figured, okay, they're going to drive down the field and score, and uh, that's going to be that until Dorian Thompson-Robinson made his third mistake of the game, and turnovers have been so key for this USC team this year's UCLA turns the ball over at just the worst time. 
and they go on to lose that game. But it was a very good effort, very well-played game on the part by UCLA. And I don't punish them for it necessarily. Uh, I was going to drop them maybe one or two spots. And then, of course, North Carolina and Ole Miss happened earlier that day. So uh, I move UCLA up one spot to 17. Uh, but Florida State moving up four spots here to number 14. How about the Seminoles this year, huh? That win against LSU is just looking better and better and better. And it was a game that, quite frankly, they dominated most of the game. Anyway, getting off track here. Florida State has been playing really well lately. Um, they ran through kind of the gauntlet in the ACC early. And they've had some some easier games coming up here. Well, this week, of course, you have the rivalry against Florida. So we'll see what that entails for this uh, Florida State team. Uh, and definitely for uh, Billy Napier's squad as well. Let's definitely see what happens and keep your eye on that one, uh, whether or not Jordan Travis and Anthony Richardson, which quarterback plays better. Uh, but Florida State, for the most part here, has been playing some really, really good football on both sides. They finally have gotten that run game figured out. That's plagued them for so long. Uh, and, and Florida State, although they're not going to do an ACC championship game and probably won't be going to a New Year's Six Bowl, this is the Florida State team that's going to be dangerous in bowl season. They still got to get past Florida first. So moving on now into the top 15. This is where I got Kansas State, a team that likely, if they can take care of business against Kansas, is going to be on their way to a Big 12 title game to try to avenge their loss against the right now undefeated TCU Horned Frogs. Uh, again, Kansas State was up in that game and TCU came back. But again, Kansas State, there's Big 12 chaos that can still reign here, right? If Kansas State does end up losing that game to Kansas, and if Texas takes care of business tomorrow, you could very well see Texas back in the conference championship game in which if you're a TCU fan, I think you would much rather see Texas than Kansas State in, or, or, or excuse me, you would much rather see Kansas State than Texas in the Big 12 championship game just because of what Texas is capable of. However, when you look at this Kansas State team, they played really well all season long. This is the Kansas State team that's absolutely deserving of a top 15 spot. And I know some argue this Kansas State team should be higher. For me, they're just too inconsistent to be put any higher as of this current moment. And I know their body of work uh, and that Tulane loss is just looking better and better uh, as the weeks go on, especially since Tulane if they end up beating Cincinnati or in the American Athletic Championship game uh, in Kansas State, again, that was an early season loss, still struggling. But this is the Kansas State team that I still really like. And as long as they take care of business, they're going to the Big 12 Championship game uh, to try to avenge their loss to TCU. So Kansas State up four spots to number 15. But I can't put Kansas State ahead of Notre Dame quite yet. Notre Dame has just been playing so hot. Uh, and I know when you have to look at the entire body of work, to a lot of people, Tulane is still a bad loss for this Kansas State team. And, well, Notre Dame's got some bad losses there as well. Uh, Marshall and Stanford, some pretty questionable losses. But you know what? Notre Dame's got some really good wins, right? They have that win over Clemson. That's the Tigers' lone loss on the resume. They played Ohio State pretty darn close. Uh, they were able to beat Syracuse there as well. And I know the Orange have kind of fallen off since starting out 6-0. Uh, but Notre Dame's got some good wins on the schedule. I know some questionable losses, but this is a team that is hot, and they got to play a, a USC team this week that's on the verge of possibly getting into the college football playoffs. So we'll see what happens with the Fighting Irish and USC this week. Uh, but right now, Notre Dame got to be feeling pretty good. They're pretty hot right now. Uh, at number 13 are the Utah Utes. You guys know how much I like Utah. So I didn't drop them below Notre Dame or Kansas State. I still feel like Utah is the best three-loss team in the entire nation. And I know that's very debatable with the likes of Notre Dame and Kansas State behind them. Uh, but Utah played Oregon pretty close. And I know it was an ugly kind of fist fight type game. Uh, but Utah was able to climb back into that game and uh, able to give themselves a nice shot there to win the dang thing. And I know it didn't happen. Utah's offense kind of stalled out in the fourth quarter. Obviously, that's why Utah's dropped here to number 13. Uh, but still like this Utah team, and although they won't be going to a Pac-12 championship game, or, well, there's still the possibility, but I think it's pretty much out of reach if I am remembering things correctly. Uh, but when you look across everything, still like this Utah team. They've played some really tough opponents this year. They've come out with some good results. So I like Utah here at number 13. Their fellow Pac-12 foe, who I 
who is still viable, I know is still viable for a spot in the conference championship game, are the Washington Huskies. If Oregon State can pull off the upset against Oregon, and if Washington takes care of business in the Apple Cup against Washington State, Washington is going to be on their way to a Pac-12 title game uh, against the USC Trojans. Again, USC has already clinched their spot. There's no debating or arguing about that. It's just who is who is USC going to face now, right? Is it going to be Washington? Is it going to be Utah? Which I think chaos would have to ensue. Um, but even then, uh, Oregon does have the tiebreaker over them if Utah were to take care of business against Colorado. Then if Oregon State were to lose. So yeah, okay. So now thinking about it, Utah's done. Utah's done and they're out. Uh, but Washington, still very much alive, right? They do have that tiebreaker over Oregon. So if Washington's able to beat Washington State and the Beavers are able to pull off the upset, whew, you're going to see the Huskies back in the conference championship game. So that'll be a story to keep an eye on. Penn State here at number 11. Penn State's only two losses this year are to Michigan and Ohio State. Two teams that, again, still likely the possibility that both of them end up making the college football playoffs. So... Penn State has not looked the best at times, uh, but overall, Penn State has had a very, very good season, uh, and I think Penn State has reminded people uh, that, hey, those past two years, not really us, right? This is the Penn State team. They're able to run the ball a lot more effectively. Now, they have a great young backfield. They're going to have a new quarterback next year, but Sean Clifford's been playing really, really well for him this year, and that defense has stood on its head at points this year as well. Don't look at the Ohio State and Michigan games. Well, the Ohio State came at times, but the Michigan game, and you'll see what I mean. Penn State, a lot of people think is a top 10 team. <laughs> to me, they're very, very close. Very, very close to breaking into that top 10, um, and we'll see what happens with Penn State against Michigan State this week. Spartans trying to make a bowl game with a win there, so we'll see what happens. Moving on into my top 10, though, Tennessee. Now, look, I know, last week, if you were a top 5 team you struggled. That was just the MO of last week. It was that week of November in college football. If you were a top five team, you struggled. And Tennessee not only struggled, they got curb stomped by South Carolina, 63 to 38. And if history repeats itself, look, a lot of people are drawing similarities to this 2016 team. Uh, where you had a couple really good wins. You beat two out of your three rivals. Uh, you went on, you beat Florida, and you beat Georgia. You ended up losing to Alabama that year in 2016. You also ended up losing to a Texas A&M team in overtime. That was a really good game. Um, and then disaster struck, right? You, you lost to a what many consider in 2016 a below-average South Carolina team. Got a couple wins back, but then you lost to Vandy. Well, what happened this year? Uh, instead of playing Texas a and uh, th they were able to win the other game out of the East, or excuse me, out of the uh, SEC West d division. Uh, you beat two out of your three rivals. You beat Florida. You beat Bama. You'll end up losing to Georgia, who, again, a lot of people consider the number one team. You'll see what I think in a minute, but I think it's pretty clear and obvious. Um, and then, look, Tennessee's got Vandy this week on the road. Do we see history repeat itself again? And especially with Hendon Hooker being out with a torn ACL, which again, injury is something you never want to see. I hope uh, Hendon Hooker has a speedy recovery from that ACL injury, which I know is asking for a lot considering it's an ACL injury. Uh, but Tennessee without their starting quarterback, is there a shot they lose next week at Vandy? Mm, something to keep your eye on there. Uh, Tennessee still definitely going to, new, to a New Year's Six Bowl game, unless of course stuff happens uh, this next week against Vandy. Um, but uh, Tennessee still a, a very solid team. You can't deny the entire body of work. They're down here at number 10. Oregon at number 9, they get a much-needed bounce-back win against the Utah Utes after they end up losing to the Washington Huskies. Again, Washington, I still think a very solid team. Uh, Oregon, that was kind of a fist fight with uh, Utah there, right? But Oregon still could be well on their way to a Pac-12 championship as long as they take care of business here and are able to beat Oregon State this next week, Oregon's going to find themselves back in a Pac-12 championship game against the USC Trojans. So we'll see if Oregon's able to take care of business. That will be a game I'll be previewing tomorrow. And let's see what happens. Bama is here at number eight. They jump up two spots. Uh, and Bama uh, still going to a New Year's Six Bowl game. 
For some reason, the playoff predictor giving them like a 16% chance to make the playoff. A, I think chaos would have to just fully ensue. And I'm talking like the winner of Ohio State Michigan would have to go lose the Big 12 cha- or the Big 10 championship game. And then Clemson would have to lose again. And Georgia would have to lose to Georgia Tech. And then LSU. Would- Look, chaos has to ensue for Bama to get into the playoff. It's not happening. Uh, I don't know why the, pro- the why the All-State playoff predictor thinks it's happening. Bama's still a very, very good team. They got Auburn coming up this week, the Iron Bowl. Always a classic game. We'll see what happens with Bama this upcoming week. And then you got Clemson up here, number seven. And look, again, when people were talking earlier this year, after that Notre Dame loss, when people were saying that Clemson had no shot to get back into the college football playoff, I called BS on that right away. I said it was blasphemy because I knew that Clemson still had very much a shot. Well, Take a look at what is unfolding here, right? Clemson, very much still a shot to get into the college football playoff as long as they're able to take care of business against a good South Carolina team that just beat Tennessee. So, hey, there is a resume booster right there. Uh, And then as well as winning against North Carolina, another resume booster. I know they just lost to Georgia Tech, but it's another ranked team for Clemson to go beat. That's definitely a a resume booster in my opinion. Clemson still got a phenomenal shot to make the playoff especially because what's likely uh well of course you get the winner of ohio state michigan winning the big 10 uh you get georgia beating lsu in the sec championship game uh you get pac-12 chaos ensuing which means usc either loses to notre dame this week or loses to whoever they play in the pac-12 championship game which pretty likely that one of those things happen uh unless you uh usc runs the table then usc i think is a better case than clemson You see that by USC being in my top five as they are not on this list. Speaking of not in the top five, LSU. I know the playoff committee really likes LSU and has them in the top five. And look, I like this LSU team too. I just wouldn't put them over USC. Why? Playoff chances, resume. Uh, Look, LSU's got probably some of the better wins as they've beaten Bama, uh, yet you got blown out by Tennessee. uh, And then that Florida State loss there as well. But USC playing some really good football right now and finally got a good win. Uh, So I jumped USC over LSU because I think once we saw uh, what USC can play like against a really, really good opponent, yeah, both the times they've played a a good opponent like that in Utah and UCLA, they've been shootouts, but nonetheless, uh, USC was able to win one of those and lose one of them. So I did jump USC over LSU, which means USC is at number five, right? They jump up three spots and I had them below Utah, uh, well, Utah ended up losing this past week. I had them below LSU. Well, LSU beat a UAB team and USC beat in what ma- what many people consider still a top 20 UCLA team. So uh, I did reward USC for that, jumped them into my top five. And it should be no surprise that the rest of the top four has remained as it is. Georgia at number one, uh, Ohio State at number two, Michigan at number three, and TCU at number four, how about the way that TCU and Michigan survived this past? In fact, how about all the way that those top uh, t- teams survived this past week? Excuse me. Okay, I thought I was going to sneeze. My apologies. But taking a look at what... Um, <clears throat> holy crap, guys. Um, that sneeze is going to sneak up on me, so I, I apologize. But... Looking at the way that stuff is going to work itself out here, right? TCU still has Iowa State. You can't overlook that game. And then whoever they play in the Big 12 championship game, which is either going to be Kansas State or Texas, which will be a really interesting game either way. But odds would say that TCU finishes the regular season unbeaten. And very well at that point could be a lock for the college football playoff, depending on what else happens around the nation, especially if USC Uh, and Clemson are able to win their conferences. Going to be hard to keep a one-loss conference champ out versus a team that TCU, if they were to lose that conference championship game. Look, I I know they've been impressive all year, but uh, uh, we'll see what happens with TCU, right? Uh, But still definitely a team that I would favor to make the college football playoff. They've been playing some really good football. The comeback kids, as they uh, would be dubbed this year, they've played everybody close. But they've beaten some really, really good teams this year. Uh, besides the fact that blowout against Oklahoma. TCU's, 
been playing really, really well. I got TCU at four. Ohio State, Michigan, hey, that's going to work itself out this week, right? The winner into the Big Ten Championship game. And this is what the game should be, right? Two versus three. Uh, well, Georgia, of course, obviously is number one. I don't have to talk about them at all for you guys to understand why Georgia is where they are, right? This has been the best team in college football this year. They're reigning national champs and other reasoning that you want to throw out there. But Ohio State, Michigan, these are the two teams that you want to watch this week. Why? Well, they play each other, silly. Have you been living under a rock? This is the biggest game of the college football season, and we thought Georgia-Tennessee was going to be good. This one is going to be phenomenal. I, I, I'm talking like game of the century potential right here. Like That is going to be a phenomenal game, and the loser still probably not out of the playoff running themselves. So it's a very interesting game to keep your eye on. Although it, it's got to feel like a do or die team. It's got to feel like a do or die game for both of these squads. So there was my top 25. Here's the playoff committee's top 25. Uh, again, not putting UCLA, USC, my apologies, over LSU. That's just a personal preference. And I know the AP poll had it that way as well. Again, still not putting Clemson over Alabama. I don't know what's going on with the playoff committee. Um, but again, they've, they've had it all year like that. So, uh, consistent, I guess. Sure. Um, that, that doesn't have a problem with me. Again, they have Kansas State up there at number 12. No real argument from me there. Uh, and the rest of it looks pretty gosh darn similar to mine. Although they did rank L Louisville. I happen to believe that Coastal Carolina is a little bit of a better team, uh, than what Louisville is. Although Louisville definitely one of the teams awaiting in the wings. Otherwise, if you guys look at my poll, it's pretty similar to what the playoff committee put out this past week. So uh, again, I'm sorry this video was late, but I'm glad it got out now. I'll give you a second to still look through this as I sign off this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, again, you guys, uh, so much support for this channel. And again, you're doing one of the things right now by interacting with this video, by watching it. Other ways you can interact with the video, like, comment, subscribe, do anything you can to me uh, to help support the channel for me. It would uh, I would really appreciate anything you guys are able to do. And last but not least, remember to play hard, but tailgate harder. I'll see all you guys in the next video, which is coming out later today. Goodbye.